All right, we've got this uh, enthalpy and heat problem dealing with 24 grams of ice being mixed with 107.4 grams of water at 80 degrees. First thing is to recognize that the ice needs to warm up. That's an MC delta T up to zero degrees. So you plug in 24.5 grams times the heat capacity of ice which is given as 2.03 grams, joules per gram degrees Celsius. And then we're gonna heat it up to the um, freezing point. So that's the final temperature is zero minus 11, minus 11.8 it started at. So that's a minus a minus. So that ends up being just 11.8 degrees Celsius with these other numbers. Multiply that through, your units cancel out and you get 586 joules. So that's the amount of energy it takes to heat up the ice to that temperature of zero. Now you gotta take the ice through, so this is to warm up to zero degrees. And now we gotta take it through the uh, phase change that takes energy. So this is our Q2 and it's MC and our M times delta H. Now it tells us how much energy it takes. So we got 24.5 grams times the delta H given, which was 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Well, our units can't cancel out, so I have to switch from grams of water to moles of water using the molar mass. And we might as well, since we're dealing with joules, let's go ahead and convert the kilojoules into joules. When I do that, I, I get a calculation of 8185 joules of energy that it takes to go through the phase change. Now I have liquid water change, if I can spell that right. Now I have liquid water. And so the other thing to recognize in this problem is that we need, um, that energy is gonna flow from one type of water, you got the cold water, from the hot water. So we're gonna use a lot of the same formulas, but we gotta recognize there's a negative sign. Now in OWL, they use that negative sign to flip um, the delta T around. So it's set of T final minus T initial. They um, applied that through and just flipped the TI minus TF. That's a bit confusing. So not doing anything new, it's delta T is always final minus initial, except when we're dealing with bond energy. So now, uh, all this energy from the hot water is flowing into the cold. But this was broken up into three parts. The energy that it takes to warm it up to zero, the energy that it takes to take it through the phase change, and now we're gonna heat it up some more uh, as liquid water. And all of this over here is liquid water. Okay, we're gonna just call it the hot water over here. So now we gotta figure out um, this is where our final temperature is going to end up. So now we know this is for, let's see, 586 here, joules, plus 8185 joules, plus we're going to warm up the water. Anytime you warm it up water or cool it down, we're going to use MC delta T. And then we're going to cool down this water, MC delta T over here, but it's going to be negative because the energy is flowing from one side to the next. So you got to put a negative in there. That's from our calorimetry work that we did. You may recall it looked a little bit more like Q reaction equals minus Q water. So now we can plug in, let's combine our joules here. So it's 4,796 joules plus the 24 grams of ice times the heat capacity of water, liquid water because it's turned into a liquid. And that's T final minus the initial temperature because it's now not 11.8 because we've warmed it up to zero degrees. And that's going to equal minus 107.4. That's our warm water. And times the heat capacity times TF. And that's the same final temperature times 80 degrees. Now I'm going to start dropping some of the units because I know at this point they're going to work out. And I want you just to see uh, the numbers and how they work out because this is where some students get lost in the mathematics. I'll keep some of the units. 4796 joules. 
plus, now I'm going to multiply these numbers together, and that equals 102.5, and I'm going to distribute it to the two um, things that are being subtracted. But one of the, the numbers is zero, so I won't end up with two terms, which is what you normally will, and you'll see that on the other side. You'll end up with just one term of 102.5 TF. When you, so that 102.5 times zero is zero. Now I'm gonna multiply the negative 107 4.184 and that equals negative 449 times TF minus 80 degrees. Okay, now I'm gonna distribute that number in there. So that's gonna equal minus 449 TF plus, because I got negative times a negative, 35949. Okay, and that equals the 4796 joules and the 102.5 TF. Now from algebra we learned we've got to combine our variables on one side and constants to the other. So I'm just gonna move this one to this side by adding 449 to both sides. And I'm gonna move this number over here by subtracting 4796 from both sides. When I do, I get 551.5. TF is equal to 31153 joules. And then I divide both sides by 551. And uh, so divide by 551.5 on both sides. Sorry. And then uh, you'll see that equals 56.5 degrees Celsius. So somewhere in there. And we're done. So some of the steps students get lost is the distributing and sometimes uh, in the addition and combining things. And of course, setting up the problem is always a challenge. Hope that's helpful and you'll find it uh, that you can work through a similar problem.